Hi, my name is Barry Crampton. Today I'm going to show you around our uh, Mercedes Vito. Then I'll take you for a ride in it, but first I'll tell you a little bit more about it. It's a 1.6 111 CDI L1 EU5 2015 on a 15 plate. One owner from new, full service history. It's not ready for a service yet, but we will have it serviced before it goes out. It's MOT'd till the 20th of the 7th, 2021. And uh, it's done 82,441 miles. I can't help smiling when I uh, drive one of these or see one of these or we, we take uh, one of them in stock. It reminds me of um, a very uncertain time in my life, but <laughs> it, it turns out it was, uh, it was a, good, a good time and a good move. Um, I'll tell you about it in a bit. So, <laughs> I don't particularly like doing vans because there isn't a whole lot of spec on them usually. Uh, big Mercedes emblem on the front, the, the grill that you used to have to pay a, a, a lot extra for or buy as an accessory to get the big Merc sign on. Now we've got a good solid full length roof rack on the top. Uh, if you need that, it's invaluable if you don't it just causes a, a like a howling noise when you get above 40 miles an hour but uh yeah, would probably cost a fortune to, to have it fitted so a good accessory if you need it it's got twin side loading doors it's ply lined has a bulkhead twin barn doors solid no windows so uh harder for people to see what you're carrying and not as easy to break in the doors fold to 90 degrees and then out to 180 degrees makes it uh, easier loading reversing up to a loading bay or getting the forklift truck up to the back um size right from side to side that's uh 65 inches about 90 inches in length up to the bulkhead and height is approximately four foot so uh, just at the moment with this pandemic we're, we're selling vans like they're going out of fashion everybody seems to be a delivery driver for for Amazon and and so on so a real handy van well looked after it's got a, a proper full-size spare wheel um, fastened to the, the the side there and we've also got uh, a tow bar I'll just take you for a ride in it So we've got the Mercedes-Benz keys there. You'll see there's no, no blade, it's a, a transponder, although, although there is a blade there if you're foolproof, obviously. So if you push that little tag up, just in case you do get locked out for any reason, you've, you've got a blade there. So back in there, foot on the clutch, into the ignition, making hard work of it today. Um, it's bench seat great vans I've, I've got to say as I was uh, as I was saying before I, I got to use one of these for about three months and uh, I was quite happy with it to be honest and um, what can I tell you about it so this one has got if I turn that on it might start playing music so I'll, I'll turn it down it's got the map pilot if you click on shared your, strikes birthday Yes, it has started playing music, and even though I turn it down, it's one of these clutch things that the faster you turn, the, the less it actually works. Uh, so there's the map pilot. I'll show you how to um, set that. It's got Bluetooth hands-free. It's also got Bluetooth audio streaming. And uh, again, I'll show you how to pair and delete a mobile in a, in a short while when we've, we've done the test drive. Um, we, we do these test drives just to make sure that everything's all right. 
Uh, this has got a full service history, which oh, phone's here. Let's just see if I can bring it up. Um, here we go. Right. So, 22nd of the 9th, 2016, at 25,756 miles. Uh, that was, I can't read it. Rowanza Mercedes Liverpool on the 4th of the 4th 2018 at 49,807 miles Rowanza Mercedes Liverpool 4th of the 2nd 2020 at 65,057 miles Rowanza Mercedes Liverpool and even though it's showing it doesn't need servicing for a good few thousand miles we will service it before it goes out and it's it's got a long MOT so um, if I had a complaint about Mercedes-Benz, especially, well, only the manual, because uh, you very seldom use the parking brake, but it's a, it's a foot brake there, the, the foot brakes. You've effectively got four pedals at the side of the clutch. There's another pedal there. And it's, it's okay, you get used to it. But, for instance, if you're on a hill, then... Um, it's difficult whereas with a handbrake you could just let it off but having said that electronic brakes these days electronic handbrakes unless they've got hill hold you do exactly the same so when when you're just at the lights you can put your foot on the brake uh, let the handbrake off and then just let the brake come up underneath your foot uh, alternatively if you're on a hill and you pull it that's it it uh, it it comes off with a bang but anyway it, it, it stops you it works I am um, phone controls on the right hand side audio controls and also here your trip computer you can work from this from this side that goes back so it's done 82,448 miles now we'll just get going as I say, it's, we do these drives, a couple of reasons to show the customers the vehicle is in stock, it is working, it is pretty clean, and this is very clean for a van. Um, and also we use it at the same time to do a test, to make sure we do a 10 mile test drive in it, get the, all the, the coolant and the oil up to working temperature and then make sure there's no leaks afterwards uh, but I can't smell anything inside uh, like you know the, uh, the heating system there's a heater radiator inside the car and some, sometimes if you can smell coolant inside the vehicle it's a heater radiator antifreeze is thinner than water so if there's a slight leak on your system the antifreeze leaks out just leaving the water and the next thing you know in weather like this even though your coolant uh, level light is on, your vehicle's frozen up, and it, it, in extreme cases, it, it can ruin your engine. So, all stuff that you pick up after 50 years in the motor trade uh, is what I'm looking for. Knocks on the steering wheel, rattles, you can't help that in a van, unfortunately. Um, the, the, this vehicle's got a bulkhead, so it's quite good. You can control the climate. Heat, heats up fairly quickly rather than having to heat the whole back up and your cargo of uh, whatever it is ice cubes so there's there's not a whole lot to, to talk about two barn doors at the back solid doors no glass in them more difficult to break in Nobody can see what you're carrying, whether there, there are or aren't any pies left in the van overnight, as I've, I've seen a couple of stickers um, on commercial vehicles. The solid roof rack on the, the top there, real well-made, substantial roof rack. You will be able to hear it's, it's howling now. We're doing 60. And again, in this day and age, climate warming and so on, I don't understand why whoever makes roof racks don't just make a spoiler to uh, to let the air flow 
over it easier, you do a lot more miles per gallon and it won't be as annoying or tiring to the driver but they don't and it does so if you don't need a roof rack first thing to do is take it off and if you do probably if it's loaded all the time you've got ladders on and what have you the, the aerodynamics <laughs> wouldn't be ideal anyway right so as we're going on rather than uh, just listen to silence and the, the roof rack that's two cameras that have just been charged both gone off old Merc there, talking about Mercedes-Benz, so we'll just uh, flip that back on, hopefully it'll come back on, but it hasn't done. Oh well. So, I used to work for a firm um, where after six months I was the longest serving member of the sales team. <laughs> They were uh, horrible people to work for, horrible people that owned it. However, I was uh, promoted to sales manager and uh, built up quite a successful team. Shortly afterwards, I was, uh, I won sales manager of the year for Mercedes-Benz. now it's, it's absolute carnage nobody can get in the right lane and even the bloke who cut in won't let them get across what a pair of lunatics what can I say I've seen it all today anyway so, one sales manager of the year. We had a great team, we had lots of fun. My boss, I don't know what to say about him, but the people that owned it, as I say, were, they were horrible. And uh, they, used to demotivate you like I don't know what and uh, <laughs> it was basically firefighting every day trying to keep everybody's morale up I uh, I've always been one of the lads never a boss even though most of my sales career I've been a boss and uh, It, it was it was unbelievable anyway we had a meeting we needed a new salesman and the thing with the motor trade is everybody knows everybody else and it soon gets round that the people you work for are horrible and they cheat you out of money which they did they change your targets all the time um, it, one of my targets I beat the target and after the target had finished they, I'd, I'd, I'd beaten the target by a thousand pound, it was a fi finance target, and after it had finished, in fact I think it was 16 days after the, it had ended, the competition had ended, they wrote to me to say that my target had been too easy, they'd put it up, I'd missed my new target by 1600 pounds, and then they sent me a nasty letter for missing my target. I, honestly, I kid you not, it was that sort of firm. But 
to be fair, we all we had a sales meeting every morning with the lads, uh, and we used to laugh our socks off at them. They were they were incredible. So we needed another salesman. The uh, boss put an advert in the paper. We uh, we interviewed lots of candidates and each one we offered the job to in the end said oh, I've been I've been asking around about you and apparently the firm you work for is horrible to which I said yes they are but I'll look after you if you come on board I'll make sure you're all right and uh, eventually we, we got a good lad we had a meeting shortly afterwards um, they'd reduced our commission base again by a lot of money um, for me personally it meant tens of thousands of pounds to which you can imagine I wasn't happy we had a meeting the lads weren't happy they, they no longer allowed to use the cars that I wanted them to use which was a range of Mercedes-Benz and I used to incentivize them by giving them a the best salesman got the best car and, and so on and uh, it wasn't as good as my car, but it was a good one. Anyway, we all had to use A-classes. Or the, the sales lads had to use A-classes. And they, and they didn't like it. They'd, they'd rather have a better car than money. So we had a meeting, a crisis meeting. And uh, I said to the, the boss, that, you know, the lads aren't happy. And he said, well, if they don't like it, they know where the door is. There's plenty more people who want to come to work for us. And I said, you think so, do you? Well, try and get someone. Because I've just had about five people. Anyway, it, it went from bad to worse. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I actually wrote about it. It was so funny and became such a battle of wits that I actually wrote about it. And uh, <laughs> But from the moment I opened my mouth, I knew that was the end for me. And my time, my, my days were numbered. So I went downstairs, I registered a Vito van. My company car was costing me something like, I think, from memory, I think it was £583 a month in company car tax. It was an E-Class with absolutely everything on because we needed to demonstrate these accessories to, uh, to customers when they asked about them. Sat-nav had only just come out so nobody knew what it was and, and, and mini discs and all, all that. So, but you think oh, right well that's great you know you had the use of the car you should pay for it but to be honest I never went out in it so I was frightened to death of getting it vandalized so um, it was either parked up my drive at home or outside the garage at work and um, costing me 500 quid so company car tax on a van at the time was 500 pounds a year that was it and I knew I needed to save money fast so for three months, <laughs> until the inevitable happened, I uh, I drove around in a Vito, and it, I've got to be honest, it's it's no great hardship. They drive great, nice and easy to drive. The same driving position as a kind of a four-wheel drive, high up off the road. Super vehicles. And plus the fact that you can, uh, <laughs> I, I, managed, I managed to get all my stuff that I, uh, I kept at work back home so that uh, when we did part company, anything I needed to take home I could just put in my pocket <laughs> without carrying a, a cardboard box out with your belongings. And uh, when, I, when I left there, that was when I started on my own. And uh, I wouldn't say I've never looked back, because I really enjoyed working. I, I really enjoyed the frantic pace of a Mercedes-Benz dealership and the lovely and varied customers we had and the great staff we had. Um, we, I, I look back on it even with that with fond memories and I look back even more at uh, when the person who owned the 
garages came to see me to uh, beg me to take my the job well to take dealer principal's job I was sales manager I didn't want to be dealer principal because you just sat in an office all day and um, I told him what I thought of him and, uh, and what he could kiss so I, I, I have I actually have fond memories of Vito's and uh, we, we had a commercial sales guy who was a bit of a character he always used to call them Vinto's and we sold a lot of them they were very very popular so I, I can thoroughly recommend them for whatever you want to do whether it be work or a hobby or to convert to a day van I'd go anywhere in one of these thanks for watching we've got we should have a 4.4 Range Rover in this week another Freelander we've actually got four of these so I probably won't be doing a video of all four it will be uh, in fact I must make a note of that um, right at the beginning so this is I'll tell you in a minute Finish the uh, finish the test drive there. Thank you for watching. Wish you a happy new year, a happy 2021, and uh, hope to see a lot more of you this year. Give our website a look over ggcars.co.uk and uh, just let us know if we can help you. Thanks for watching.